Welcome back, True Seeker. The final four is set for the 2024 March Madness Tournament. And I want to talk about the four teams that made it and four things that are strange. And we're going to start right here with the latest and final entrant, NC State upsetting Duke in the Battle of North Carolina. Again, this was the ACC tournament game that was tipping off right when the news broke that R.J. Barrett's brother died. And R.J. Barrett used to be a star at Duke. His brother was Nathan Barrett. And he died at age 19, Nathan Barrett did. R.J. Barrett played his last year at Duke in 2019. And they did announce the news of his passing March 14th, right as the game was tipping off. But he had actually died two days earlier, March 12th, meaning the 19-year-old died 19 days ago and again year after year we see these very suspicious deaths that are highly ritualistic and they're so connected to the outcomes of the sports games nc state's greatest coach who took him to the to the championship in 1983 jim valvano known as jimmy v uh, if you don't recognize that name, you'd probably recognize the face and the speech. Anytime they're trying to raise money for cancer, they bring up Jimmy V. They say he has one of the greatest uh, cancer, battling cancer stories, speeches of all time. But, of course, he died at Duke's Medical Center. The North Carolina State coach, great. He died at Duke's Medical Center back in 93. That year, North Carolina won March Madness as well. It was UNC, the Tar Heels. Of course, North Carolina is that state of basketball dominance. Steph Curry, the star in the league, played at Davidson in North Carolina. The death of R.J. Barrett's brother was announced on Steph Curry's birthday. And R.J. Barrett's playing for the Toronto Raptors right now, who Steph Curry's father used to play for, Del Curry. Anyhow, the big thing about NC State winning today is, again, Nathan Barrett died and NC State upset Duke the day of that news. We pointed out that day how Nathan Barrett in Gematria equals 83. NC State Wolfpack equals 83. They last went to a Final Four in 83. They're considered a Cinderella team in the tournament. To be such a high seed and to make it to the Final Four is a Cinderella story. In Gematria, Cinderella equals 83. They haven't done this since 1983. And, of course, that was 41 years ago. NC State just got their 41st tournament win all time by beating Duke. Duke and Gematria equates to 41. So they get their 41st tournament win, beating Duke to go to the Final Four for the first time in 41 years. And, and last weekend, we were talking about something similar, similar to this because the Baltimore Orioles haven't won the World Series since 83. And then their owner just died on the 83rd day of the year. And Baltimore has that Gematria 41. And we all know Mahomes got his 41st career road win, beating Baltimore in the AFC Championship to go to the Super Bowl. But yeah, this NC State Duke thing, you know, just so blatant. And, and notice they won with 76 points, NC State. The women also won with 76 points today. Go figure. Both teams scored the same points. And if you're new here, 76 is a number that has a lot to do with the history of slavery. And again, it's kind of an unspoken thing, but in sports, um, you know, uh, there was a time of slave breeding to essentially build superhumans. I'll just let you think about where that factors in with the world sports today. They pay tribute to the slave code a lot in sports. And here's Jimmy V. Again, he died April 28th, 93, after UNC won the championship that year. But he died at Duke University School of Medicine. That's the NC State coach who took him to the championship as a Cinderella story in 83. You see how the year they won, they had 26 total wins on the season. That was the 82-83 season. Phoenix has Gematria 26 where the final four is. And the seeds that NC State has now beaten to get to the championship add up to 26 after beating Duke today. That's one of the other things we were looking at if NC State upset today. Again, year after year, you pay attention to the point differential for games, um, the seeding, just 
you can see with laser focus through the rituals. So another team in the final four, UConn. UConn, the team that all the media picked to win the championship this year. They're in the final four. Remains to be seen if they'll win. But right before they won in the Elite Eight with 82 points, Joseph Lieberman, the Connecticut senator, who was nearly in the Oval Office back in 2000, died at age 82. And of course, in Gematria, Joseph Lieberman equals 82. If you're wondering how you get that value for Joseph Lieberman, there are four base ciphers of the English language, the alphabetic order. A is 1 up to Z is 26. The reverse alphabetic order, Z is 1 back to A is 26. And then both orders with numerology. In the same cipher that Joseph Lieberman equals 82, which is the reverse alphabetic order with numerology, Nathan Barrett equals 83. NC State Wolfpack equals 83, like we were talking about. With just the alphabetic order alone, Cinderella is 83. But Joseph Lieberman dies at 82. And then UConn wins their very next game in the Elite Eight with 82 points. They were plus 56 in that game coming in, plus 56. Lieberman has that gematria of 56. Lieberman has the 56. UConn was plus 56. Lieberman died on his 33rd day of his age. UConn was on 33 wins for the year, again, at the time of the passing. But then they win by 30 to go plus 86 in the point differential. And then they just beat Illinois by 25 to go plus 111 in the point differential. And notice University of Illinois equals 111. University of Illinois 111. That's what UConn now is in the tournament. They've outscored their opponents by 111 with the latest win being over the University of Illinois. And hold on a second. Am I on the wrong mic again? I am. You know what? I'm on the wrong mic. So I got two free hands. Be easier to type. Whatever. Okay, the other school, Purdue. Purdue is the only, this is the 85th tournament this year. 85th tournament, Purdue equals 85. Purdue University equates to 85. Purdue, after winning today to advance to the final four, is now plus 85 points scored against their opponents in the tournament. Plus 85 going to the final four, which is in Phoenix, Arizona, which equates to 85. And Arizona State uh, University, or wait, is it Arizona State Sun Devils? That's what it is. Arizona State Sun Devils. They are the hosting team for the Final Four for the 85th tournament. So Purdue's plus 85 right now. And remember who died at the beginning of the year related to the state that Purdue's in, Indiana. Bob Knight, who's fifth all-time in wins as a college coach, died five days before the official start of the college basketball season. And, of course, basketball's a game of five-on-five. Five. He's associated with the state of Indiana. Purdue's in Indiana. And today, Purdue got their 48th tournament win. See how Final Four is 48? Arizona is the 48th state in order of statehood. Purdue gets their 48th win, advancing to the Final Four. Tennessee, who they beat, has that gematria of 137, which is the 33rd prime number. And they got their 33rd win of the season, Purdue. They came into the game against Tennessee with 47 wins in the tournament, picked up the 48th. They stayed on 34 all-time tournament losses. They began the tournament by beating St. Peter's. Or no, that was Tennessee, actually. I take it back. Tennessee is the one who beat St. Peter's with 34 points at the start of the tournament. So you have Purdue in in the 85 ritual, the, the one school that has a double connection to 85. You have UConn in by the numbers, everyone's favorite after Lieberman's death. You have, uh, again... NC State, who just picked up their 41st tournament win all time. Duke, 41. 41 years from 1983. And by the way, just in light of the, the, the game being between NC State and Duke on March 14th, 314. Look at how ESPN has to give you this shot. Out of all the shots they could have given you from the game. I mean, they're telling you it's all about the numbers. Just like the date of his death, 314. This is the shot they give you when NC State upsets. And of course, three. 14 reminds you of pi, pi, cycles, circles. It's like we're, we're living in a circle and the same things are repeating every year. Another championship comes around, same type of rigged rituals, more ritual sacrifices, more clear deaths connected to the games. And somehow it's like nobody blinks an eye. So we've covered, again, Yukon, Purdue, NC State. The only school we didn't cover was Alabama. 
and knows Alabama beat Clemson. If you would have heard it, you would have thought it was the college football playoff, not the uh, March Madness tournament. But Alabama, their coach, Nate Oates, and by the way, Nate Oates got into college basketball coaching through the Hurley brothers. One coach is at UConn, the other coach is Arizona State. But they brought him into the college circle of coaching. And now he's in this final four where both Hurley brothers are involved. But he got his 213th career win. And they're the Elite Eight or the uh, the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight for Alabama or in Los Angeles. We saw how if he won both games, he'd get his 213th career win in L.A., the 213 area code, where they're always doing area code rituals, of course. Sure enough, he did that. He stayed on 53 losses with Alabama in the Sweet 16. Again, 53 is the 16th prime number. Uh, L.A. should remember Super Bowl 53. Only 16 points scored. Los Angeles equals 53. So it was Patriots. Patriots beat Los Angeles in Super Bowl 53 with a total of 16 points. Goat equals 16. Brady tied Jordan in that Super Bowl with six Super Bowls apiece. But, um, yeah, again, just Alabama got their 29th tournament win beating Clemson. You see how football's 29? And, and again, that's the football rivalry. So... Just perfect, perfect scripts. And I, I want to type in the name Nathan Barrett for the person who's not familiar with Jamatri and the four base ciphers. Nathan Barrett with the alphabetic order is 142. When he was announced dead, it was 142 days into the NBA season, March 14th. Here, the NBA season began October 24th. Just to show you this in real, real time. October 24th was the start date of the NBA season. The news breaks March 14th. 142 days after the season began, Nathan Barrett's dead. And now, we, again, we didn't know at the time when the news broke that he died two days earlier, but they really broke the news right as the NC State Duke game was tipping off for the ACC tournament. So notice how Nathan Barrett is 52 with numerology and 83 with the reverse alphabetic order in numerology. Look at NC State Wolfpack. 52-83. And then um, notice also that Nathan Barrett has the 209 in it. I noticed that Jimmy V, he had 209 wins with NC State. It's funny he had 112 losses because Phoenix, where the final four is, is on the 112th meridian. Notice he had 337 wins for his career. That's the 68th prime number. Big basketball ritual number. Basketball, 68. Uh, again, now that now the March Madness tournament, 68 teams. But again, the Catholic Church has always run the thing. That's why the first official March Madness was in the year 85 when they used that term. And it was the Catholic School of Villanova over the Jesuit School of Georgetown. But Catholicism, mathematics, basketball, they're all 68. Solar system, 68. Helios, the old name of the sun, 68. On and on and on. Big time number 68 if you're new here. But 337 is the 68th prime number. And, you know, when the uh, Jesuits, it, again, the calendar we're on that says today is March 31st, 2024. Easter Sunday, this calendar we're on was given to us by a Jesuit priest back in the 16th century, and the calendar went live on the 337th day of his age, again, the 68th prime. And that, that's what I've always been explaining is that they set up this system based on this old world knowledge, the calendar and the English language established at the end of the 16th century. They set up this system that's a mathematical based system, and you just see how the rituals carry out day after day, day after day. So. The one thing that I that I'm a little bit stumped on right now is why um, both Duke and NC State are plus 40 in points scored for the tournament right now. Mathematics is 40, but I, I feel like there's something else about that that I'm missing. After NC State beat Duke, they're both plus 40 in points scored for the tournament. All right, so yeah, this was the post from March 14th when the news broke. Just talking about how the name Nathan fit in with basketball, how Duke University fits in with basketball, pow, pow, you know, powerhouse school in the sport. R.J. Barrett, the brother, his name's also 68. Next game for his team at the time at the announced death was against the Orlando Magic, 68. Yeah, this is just a little refresher. 19-year-old brother. And when um, 
just the other day when Duke when Duke and uh, North Carolina State both upset in the Sweet 16. Again, we thought there was a real good chance they were both going to upset and face each other in this round 19 days after the death. Might have R.J. Barrett's brother being 19. And, and, and if I didn't say so already, NC State also equals 19. This was the one other piece. NC State's got that 19. When they did that, it was two days ago. It was March 29th. That was 19 days after the birth anniversary of Jimmy V. 19 days later. Think about that. And notice what age Jimmy V died, died at. 47, right? Always talking about what is 47. A lot of teams this year had some 47 rituals in the tournament. Grambling was in their first tournament in 47 years. Some other things I'm forgetting now. But yeah. Beautiful script. And, and hey, by the way, my troll, my dedicated troll who just put up another slander video that's totally false. Uh, why not call in and debate? If you're out there, troll, the phone number to call in is up on the screen. Let me know why you put up the latest false video with nothing but sli lies and slanders. A again, there's a new video about what a horrible tournament we're having. Uh, first of all, a lot of people in my community made a fortune in the opening two days of the tournament. The only part of the tournament that was bad for us was the round of 32. Um, it was all, it was, if had we just taken all fa favorites, you would have hit 15 out of 16 games. We were thinking some upsets were going to come through in that round, but they just went all favorites. And, um, but yeah, the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight have been very good for us. The opening round's very good. Trolling the world, trying to uh, slander the work again. Again, nobody exposes it like this. Nobody calls the major upsets like we do year after year. And then you got the same trolls trying to slander, but they'll never call in and debate. So, by the way, if anybody wants to call in about the tournament and, and share their story, how they've done, good or bad, the line is open. Feel free to call that number on the screen. And, yeah, I think I think those really were all the main points. There, there's other things that can be said, but, yeah, Bob Knight's death at the end of, beginning of the year for the state of Indiana. Purdue goes in by the numbers. UConn. I mean, UConn's already on the way, but then the Lieberman death was just so blatant and obviously so synced. And, and remember, I was showing how his death was synced with UConn before the next game they score 82 after he dies at 82. And, uh, you know, just for the person out there is like, well, Joseph Lieberman equals 82, but you had four different ciphers. I just want you to think about what the odds of his name equaling 82 in any of the ciphers would be to match his age of death and to go with everything else. See how his name's also 71, like March Madness? Like how we always talk about 71 and March Madness? March Madness also 118, like Jimmy V died on the 118th day of the year. But yeah, you know, the, the last time the tournament was in Arizona, I had my best tournament ever. That was in 2017. We only had one championship scenario. It was UNC beating Gonzaga. And it was all synced up with the bathroom bill in the Carolinas. And we said it was going to be all about 71, that tournament in the Carolinas. And it was. But you see how Bathroom Bill's 71. You see how Gonzaga's 71. You see how Gonzaga Bulldogs is 71. UNC beat Gonzaga with 71 points in the Bathroom Bill tournament. And the South Carolina Lady Cox, as they were calling them that tournament, also won in the women's. And again, the Bathroom Bill is what got the All-Star game taken away from the Carolinas. And it was about who can use the... Uh, the restroom, the man, the woman, or the person who identifies as something different. So. But yeah, it, it's sad that, um, you know, millions of people, well, tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions probably watch these games worldwide. And countless go to the countless people go to the games. They get their hearts broken at the game. You know, by, by the end of the tournament, one, one group of fans is happy. But um, it's just sad that the most fans don't have a clue about all this ritual sacrifice that's going on beyond the, behind the scenes. And it's just so obvious. It's so obvious. So if you missed the video on R.J. Barrett when he passed, it is up there. It's on two different YouTube channels. It's on my Twitter. Um, You know what was sad, too, is, is we were pointing out how he was dead on the 74th, or they broke the news on the 74th day of the year. And again, 74 is the killing code, as we talk about all the time. 
74 is just such a fateful number connected to death. And then you go back to that day, um, March 14th. I mean, what was the final score of the game? By the end of the game, where's Duke at? Duke had lost to NC State with 74 points on the 74th day of the year, the killing code. Again, if you're new here, look up the song. You see how killing is 74, gematria is 74. Gematria is the practice of calling numbers into words. A song out there called gematria, the killing name. Again, stabbing 74, 74th day of the year to remember the stabbing of Caesar. Again, English is 74, energy 74, occult 74, big time number. Number that we've probably talked about more than any other number since so that's where my research began really was just everything focused around that why the world trade centers came down on the 74th meridian why three of the first five presidents died on seven four yeah what's sad is these young guys on the court you know <laughs> It happens all the time. Five, ten years from now, they'll still be young guys. Probably at least one of them will be gone in some tragic, mysterious thing that doesn't make any sense. The types of stories we cover all the time. All right, we got one caller. Let's see. What's up, 647? Hey, Doug, what's going on? It's Away from Toronto. How are you doing? You're all right. What, what, what's up? I'm good. I'm calling because uh, I want to see the uh, state please. Your call's a little bit broken up. I do, right? They... Sorry, can you hear me now? Okay. Right, go, go ahead. I was going to say, okay, pretty one with 72 points, right? Uh, Toronto equals 72. Beck Eady is from, uh, is from Toronto. RJ Barry is from Toronto. Uh, I didn't realize that. I did not, I did not realize that, uh, I don't think RJ Barrett's from Toronto, but he plays for their basketball team right now. I didn't realize that Zach Eady was from Toronto. He's from Toronto. I didn't realize that. Yeah, from Toronto. Yeah, RJ Barrett. Yeah, RJ Barrett's from Toronto. Oh, he's from there too? I didn't realize that. Yeah, he grew up in Toronto. Yeah, RJ Barrett's from Toronto. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. Toronto's 72 points. You know what else? You know what else I realize about this? RJ Barrett is 23 years old, and Easter has the Gematria 23. Really, we really liked uh, Nikola Jokic to get his 23rd triple double of the season today because he's the 41st pick, and it's 41 days after his birthday, and it's 15 date numerology, and he wears number 15 like Edie. And both those guys keep having big games on 15 dates. But yeah, uh, Jokic did get his 23rd triple double, big Easter number. So yeah, this. It's making more sense now that this all comes full circle on Easter. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, RJ Barry for 68. Uh, you know, they, the Wolf Pack beat them on Easter, which so equals 68 as well. So it's like, you know, and now yes. they're facing uh, the guy from Toronto, Purdue. Here, let, let me just, if, here, your call is, I'm not sure everybody can understand your call because it's so unclear, but I, I heard what you said well enough. I want to make sure we got that point. We were just pointing out how R.J. Barrett equals 68. Like um, basketball equals 68. Catholicism, again, Easter is a very Catholic holiday. But yes, Easter has the 68 in 23. And now this ritual comes full circle on Easter Sunday. Okay, good one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's what I want to add. Like, I, and I, that's why I kept betting, you know, thanks to you guys. And the map is, I kept betting Purdue. Purdue was my team to go all the way. Like, there's no, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, this being the 24th uh, year of the millennium, like 2024, you know, and 24th year of Canada. And, um, you know, we expect a lot of big things for Canada this year, right? So, and uh, that includes the NCAA tournament, where we even think that we can become a VP. But um, also, you should know RJ Barrett, right? He got drafted into the NBA right after the Toronto Raptors had won their championship. So, like, it's not a coincidence, you know, 24 season, 24 years after the Raptors had won, he gets elected, or he gets elected to the NBA. Like, Edie now is, you know, doing his best to win. Like, it, it's just like 
a crazy coincidence, but like even keeping an eye on this guy, particularly this year, and so far he hasn't let us down. He's been winning every single game thoroughly. And to cap it off, he won a 72, a pretty one of 72 points. Like that's so blatant. Um, let's see, you're saying today, today, is that what they won was 72, like Toronto 72? That's right, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good point with him being from Toronto. The year the Raptors beat Steph Curry in the finals, that was the 73rd NBA season. Like, Curry's born on the 73rd day of the year. But the 72nd anniversary season, mm -hmm. Toronto, 72, they won it. And remember that year Kawhi went to the Raptors on the day the Drake album came out? And Drake calls Toronto the six. And they Hold on, i got to mute this ad. But, yeah, good, good, good point uh, about Edie. You probably don't know is uh, RJ Barrett. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I, RJ Barrett, I think, is Catholic, so he comes from a big Catholic family. Okay, well, I, I really appreciate you bringing the uh, the Toronto observations, because, yeah, I was overlooking that, that he was actually from Toronto. And here's the thing, they announced about Toronto. Toronto's the city that equals 36 forwards and backwards. They announced the death of RJ Barrett's brother on the 36th birthday of Steph Curry. And again, like you said, Zach Eady from Toronto gets the 72 today. So interesting. Absolutely. That's, uh, I'm trying to pray through all the way, man. I've never seen anything like this. Like this, the Toronto numbers are hitting like crazy, especially since you put us on to RJ Barrett's brother's death. I really was like, oh you know, man. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to call in because it's so hard to call in for the March Madness stuff. But yeah, I got a chance today, and I just want to show with everyone. Just so people know, the the new phone number we're using is a a call board. So if you call in, you just get in line. So it's it's easier to get through. Well, no worries. Uh, appreciate the work as usual. The amazing notes. Uh, yeah, I hope. Uh, Purdue wins, and uh, you know we really make some big money stuff. So. Okay, uh, Purdue's narrative to win is they're the school that's most connected to NASA. It's the day of the eclipse. The eclipse stats come from NASA at this day and age. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what, Neil Al Alden Armstrong. The eclipse goes to Toronto too. What is it? The eclipse also the eclipse that's going to be happening also runs across Toronto as well. Goes in Toronto along the line of the eclipse. Yes. I see. I see. Okay. Well, good yeah. good observations. Appreciate that Toronto perspective. Yeah, no worries. Anytime. Take care. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Let's go from uh, Toronto to Seattle. Seattle, you're on. Hey, Zach. It's Eric and Edmund. How are you doing, man? Doing all right. How are you? Hello? Yeah. Good. So I'm a Boilermaker fan because I'm, West, I'm from West Lafayette, Indiana. I was born there. Um, I got some extra extra numbers connected to, to um, Purdue. And I got some theories also. Um, so 85, West Lafayette, I-N, if you write it that way. That equals 85 as well. So they have three connections to... They have three connections to 85. I'm spelling Lafayette wrong. There it is. Yeah, West Lafayette. I yeah. am. That's funny. Three connections to 85. Crazy. Purdue's 85. Purdue University's 85. And again, they're on plus 85 points right now for the tournament, advancing to Phoenix, Arizona, where the final four is with 85. And notice also the other thing that's been yeah. standing out about Purdue is just how they have the 247 in their gematria. And that's how old the country is right now. Yeah. So, and um, also, the year they went to, the last year they went to the Final Four, the head coach, Lee Rhodes, was the head coach of that team. He only coached for two years, 78 through 80. And he took them, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember what the record was, but he died at age 85 as well. I found that out. So that's interesting as well. And I got something else about, so during the game, when they won the game, they said that Matt Pena was the third coach to take Purdue to the final four. So it was Lee Rose in 80, and it was George King in uh, 69, okay? 
So George King was the head coach from 1966 to 1972, which was the score of the game, 66 to 72. And then he became, uh, became an athletic director after that, and he was the athletic director until 92, okay? So, and then I'm con- I also had a connection with, well, Purdue is connected to two famous people. Can you name the two famous people that they're, they're most connected to in history? Neil Armstrong and, or, and other. Who? Yep. And who's the other? John Wooden. Oh, yeah, okay, big basketball. John Wooden. Yeah. So John Wooden was the team. They lost to, they lost to John Wooden in both of those. In 69, they lost to John Wooden on his way. It was actually in the final against John Wooden. So it was Purdue where John Wooden attended and has the only championship in 1932 of all, all years, right? 32. Uh-huh. Um, was a, and then in 80, they lost in the final four, the semifinal to John Wooden. And both of those games were played on 3-2-2. Two, two. <laughs> Go figure. Believe it or not. Man. Go figure. 3-2-2 two, two in 1969 and 3-2-2 two, two in 1980. They, they lost both those games, and they were both against John Wooden, a Purdue alumni. So what are the odds of that? That, that smells, in my opinion. And so another number I have, is uh, the, the distance. So you have the connection with Neil Armstrong. So obviously uh, the alleged moon landing was, uh, as we all know, was on July 20th, 1969, the 201st day of the year, correct? Right. And 322 was, was, 322 was 121 days uh, before the moon landing in 1969. So, uh, uh, effectively Purdue played, you know, and lost to UCLA 121 days before the moon landing, which is 11 times 11, right? Apollo 11. There's a lot of 22 connections to Purdue. Um, like the starting lineup of Purdue has been the same in every single game this year they started every every single game the same five players and if you add up their numbers it adds up to 79 which is the 22nd prime correct right so there's another that's another connection to 2-2 and the fact that 79-80 was the season that they went to the last final four right so and then i called you I called you, I don't know, a week or two ago, and I talked to you about the, the 55 of uh, the player that they added to the portal this year, Lance Jones, number 55. Okay. And I found a lot of connections. So, so George King, George King played in West Virginia, and then, he, and then he coached he coached Purdue, like I said, to their first final, actually. But he played professional basketball for the Syracuse Nationals right. back in the day, and he won the he won the NBA final in 1955. And the interesting is, thing is is that he defeated the the then Fort Wayne Pistons to win his only NBA uh, NBA championship with the Syracuse Nationals. I thought that was interesting, and the fact that Syracuse used to be called the Orange Man. And the last two times Purdue uh, played in the Elite Eight, they played orange teams. They lost to Virginia, I think, was that in 19, 2019, when Carson Edwards scored like 42 points. So you had that 42 points that Carson Edwards. And that was on, that was on Virginia's way to winning the national title that year. And the previous year, Virginia had lost to a 16 seed. They were the first team to lose to a, a 16 seed. In the, you know what I'm saying? And then Purdue lost to a 16 seed last year. Right. And on that note, connecting to the to, – you, you said – you were talking about um, uh, Bobby Knight's death. And I think there is a connection with Bobby Knight. Um, so another connection to Knight is that Fairleigh Dickinson were the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights. 
Mm. I'm just going to point that one out. And then in 22, um, this goes deep. I've, I, I did a real deep dive. I've been following Purdue, obviously, because they're, they're where I'm from. I've been a Purdue fan for a long time. Um, I, I look at it through a different lens now. I'm still a fan, but you know how it is, man. I mean, it's all rigged. I, I think that if they win it all, they're picked to win it all, right? They got the 85 all over them, so I, I feel pretty confident that maybe it is their year. Um, I, kept, I connect a lot of this thing to the death of Caleb Swan again. Do you remember him? Uh, that was a Purdue too. player who – wait, was he Michigan State or Purdue that player? Well, he originally, uh, he originally committed to Michigan State and then he played for Purdue. He was a McDonald's All-American. He was from like a, a, a troubled past. Um, he got connection to Fort Wayne as well. So he got the Fort Wayne Piston connection. Um, Matt Painter is originally from Fort Wayne, but he went to high school in Muncie. And he grew up in Indiana, who's your fan? But um, Bob Knight, when he, when he was coming out of high school, he never got recruited by Bob Knight. The only people that recruited him were Purdue. So he ended up going to Purdue being an Indiana fan all his life. I've seen a, I, a, I remember a, now, Jaden Ivey became the 50th player drafted out of Purdue in history. And Caleb Swanigan, who went to Purdue, had just died recently. And he wore number 50. Yeah, we covered this back then. He wore number 50. Yeah. Exactly. Caleb Sylvester, Caleb Sylvester Swanigan also equals 85. Hey, here's that 128 number. I think that's the... Here's that 128 number. I pointed out back then okay. that boy I pointed out back then when that ritual happened with Jaden Ivey that Boilermakers equals 128, and Swanigan died on the 128th day of Ivy's age, to make no mistake about it. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. But the connection. So he was drafted. He was drafted by Portland yeah. in the first round, the 26th pick. And Purdue just won their 26th all-time regular season championship this year. So he was picked 26. They just won the 26th. And uh, and then the same year that. Uh, Swanigan died, Purdue won the Phil Knight Invitational in Portland, okay? And they beat Gonzaga, and they beat Duke back-to-back. Um, they were both ranked in the top 10, and, they were, and then they, I can't remember they beat in the final. I think it might have been Duke. But so they went out and won that in Portland. And I, that's kind of when I started going, what's up with that? Because uh, Swanigan had just, had just, I think it was before it, yeah, after his death, I, I got the I got the dates written here somewhere, but um, so that's deep, and uh, and then the and then I'm gonna make this last one like the connection of 55. Well, so John Wooden, who went to Purdue, died at age 99. Okay, and the and the 48 is the 99th day of the year. So that's another connection. I'm kind of thinking if Purdue wins it all, it's connected to Wooden, um, and then the moon landing which was it's the 55th anniversary of the moon landing this year. So it's a 44 anniversary of them getting to the final four in 80, but it's also the 55th anniversary of them getting to the final in 1969. And if you add 44 and 55, it equals 99. So you got another 99 there. And I think there's some connection to the wooden. And Here's my last one. It might sound like it's crazy, but I'm connecting it to the so four eight. We got that eclipse, man. We got the eclipse coming on the four eight, and I'm thinking that's the, the point I keep making. I mean, that's like Purdue's time. best narrative because they're so connected to NASA. NASA's a big part of the eclipse. Yeah, the moon, the moon passing in front of the sun, and they're playing in the valley of the sun. You know what I'm saying? Right. Does that sound crazy? Well, no. Our, I mean, uh, that was the most obvious well, part. For another, for another eight, five, um, Neil Armstrong was born on five August. Man, you yeah. Like that. Eight, that's five. what I was saying earlier. That's like 80, 85 exactly. as well. Exactly. So this whole this whole uh, eclipse thing, 
I'm thinking the moon is, is going to book. What I was thinking before Arizona went down, I was thinking it's going to be a, a moon team, which I was thinking it's either going to be Houston, because Houston's also linked to the, you know, uh, mission control. I was thinking it's either it's going to be Houston or it's going to be Purdue as the moon teams. And then you would have the representative of the sun, either, I was thinking either Arizona or San Diego State, but there's really nobody left for the sun narrative, you know what I mean? Other than the fact that it's being played in Arizona. That's, that's the only thing I can really see. Sure. What do you think about that? Well, it's a thought. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, 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 put, I'll put out my championship thoughts on, on the Patreon, so. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. That's, that's what I got, man. I got more, but the 55, 55 years and 44 years, um, the 55, there's a lot of 55, you know, there's a ton. And I, and I, and I, uh, I talked to you about that and, he, and, and, uh, Lance, Lance Jones's dad died 55 days before Lance's 23rd birthday, you know, and then you got all these other 55s, but anyway, Oh, and Mackie, Mackie Arena, where they live, where they play at, in Indiana and West Lafayette, 55. Engineering goes 55. Um, okay, we're, we're getting too deep in the hole now. But. Yeah, man, be... Okay, All right. whatever, man. I'll All right. That, that's, what, that's what I have to offer. All right, All appreciate right. it. Thank you, man. All right, Later. thank you. Later. Yeah, I want to come back to this Toronto piece because, yeah, R.J. Barrett, for the person in the chat who said, why would they sacrifice R.J. Barrett's brother – for NC State, again, he has the right numbers. Look at his name, Nathan Barrett, 8352. And again, he died 142 days in the NBA season, NBA season. But NC State Wolfpack, 5283. 83 is the 23rd prime. Um, again, Easter's 23 when this ritual comes full circle. But just like I was saying, you look at the death of Jimmy V. You know, he's the NC State coach who won it in 83. He dies at Duke University Medical Center right after UNC wins the championship. So, I mean, instead of just looking at, like, school versus school, think about it as a state, too, because these rituals are about the state. It's like the other year when Kansas won. Kansas won 65 days after Kansas' birthday. And, of course, Kansas has that gematria 65. So the rituals, it's the whole state's tied together. And just like how they announced his death on Steph Curry's birthday, who played college basketball. And Steph Curry, whose father played for Toronto and where R.J. Barrett is now. And Steph Curry met his wife from Toronto. But I was looking at this. The last time the Raptors won a game was in North Carolina. Look at this. The last Raptors win was in North Carolina in Charlotte. And they won with 111. That, that's funny, the 111, because... That 111 actually goes with um, North Carolina State has the 111. And even if you had a wolf pack on it, it's 111. So Toronto's last win was on 3-3. R.J. Barrett for Toronto. His brother's sacrifice synced with the NBA season, this college tournament. And again, R.J. Barrett has the 68 in his name. Oh, snap. That's what it is. R.J. Barrett's 40 in his name as well because both Duke both Duke and, and North Carolina State after this game are now plus 40 in scoring for the tournament. That's crazy. But R.J. Barrett's 23 years old right now, and Easter is 68 and 23. And all those 83s are just somehow 83s, the 23rd prime. And again, NC State hasn't been to the final four since 83 41 years ago they just got their 41st tournament win doing what they haven't done in 41 years doing it over duke the 41 school and you see how duke's also 67 so is blood sacrifice whoops blood sacrifice 67 human sacrifice 67 fateful numbers soul 67 satanic 67 killer 67 Anyhow, the championship game, Duke's not in it, but they're a big part of the narrative. Championship game is 67 days from R.J. Barrett, Barrett's brother as well. So, again, you guys, you just learn this knowledge you see through every day. Like today, Rasheed Rice is the big story on the 91st day of the year. And if you missed the video I did on this earlier, 
uh, just everything about this is perfect ritual. It's in Dallas. Dallas Texans is where the Kansas City Chiefs came from. They used to be called the Dallas Texans. It's 49 days after the Super Bowl. Uh, he wore number four. It was Mahomes' fourth Super Bowl. The Chiefs won their fourth Super Bowl. They became four and two on the 42nd day of the year. This is perfectly synced with Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. This ritual is exactly 42 weeks after Joe Montana's birthday, who the Super Bowl was synced with so perfectly, just like the last Joe Montana Bowl was, his Chiefs over his Niners. Again, they won the first one in the 2019 season, and then they became the first team to go back-to-back -back in 19 years this year. Montana wore 19 for the Chiefs, 16 for the Niners, like the score was 16-19 at one point in the Super Bowl. And if you guys missed my live coverage of the Super Bowl, just watch the opening seconds of it. I began by talking about how the game was going to be all about 19 and why they were doing a huge 19 ritual just when they were having the players take the field. Debo Samuel, number 19, the first guy out 19 minutes after the hour. I mean, they got the thing, a perfect script. Raptors are on a 13-game losing streak that started on 3-3. 33 and 13, both huge numbers of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. All the American sports credit the Scottish Rite Freemasons. Mason studied the 47th problem of Euclid. Jimmy V did it 47 at Duke University after UNC wins the tournament. You know, he died 23 days after UNC won the tournament that year. They won it April 5th, 93. He's dead 23 days later. Again, this ritual come in full circle with 23-year-old R.J. Barrett on Easter on a day where we really liked yep, the Joker in the NBA to get his 23rd triple-double of the year. Easter's got the 23. Joker does it in Denver. 68 land also like Easter. Again, like R.J. Barrett, like basketball, like Catholicism, like mathematics, like how they got it all planned out by this code. So. Yeah, the only question is, who, who, who are they going to get between now and, and the championship game? So April 6th comes around. You know it's going to get ugly Final Four day. They always got some sick ritual on 4-6. Genesis 46 begins with the sacrifice. Sacrifice 46. March Madness 46. Remember what they did last year on April 6th? Or maybe time slide. Maybe it was two April 6th ago. But they had to put out the cause of death for Coolio died on the 46th anniversary of the sample for Gangster's Paradise, the song by Stevie Wonder, Pastime Paradise. And then they put out the uh, Michael K. Williams cause of death, too. He was also, he died on Idris Elba's birthday. They both got famous on The Wire on Jesuit Run HBO. All right, hold on. We got, um, well, let me see. I think I'm burning up the computer here. We got a couple more calls. Let's go out to uh, 773. Come on, Zach. Yeah, what's up? I was just uh, calling back in. I called in uh, January about uh, the Purdue 128, but uh, I was just the whole Virginia, you know, the last time uh, team won on 4 8 was Virginia, and uh, Purdue can do it again on 4 8. And then also, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, Boilermakers 128, obviously, but uh, Boilermakers' first season was in 1896, which is also 128 years ago. So I just wanted to uh, – everyone's uh, talked about Purdue, but they didn't see that the uh, Purdue Boilermakers' first season was in 1896, which is 128 years ago, which I thought was very interesting. I just wanted to bring that up, and that's all I had, Zach. Yeah, that's a great observation. I appreciate that. No problem. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to uh, 515. Yep, hey, it's Nate. Hey, how you doing, Zach? Doing well, how are you? Good, good, good. Um, I'm from Iowa, man, and then I was, um, not to get off topic or anything, but I've been looking at this LSU and Iowa game coming up. Um, and it's on April Fool's Day, which is April Fool's Day equals 153, 63, 198, and 72. And um, I'm looking at the date numerology, which will be 4-1. Um, 
2024, which would be 13, 29, and 49. And I see that LSU is 31 and 4, and Iowa is 32 and 4 for the record. And I'm looking up on the um, the Gematria calendar or um, calculator. Um, I looked up Caitlin Clark and I looked up Angel Reese in their stuff, and then I'm looking at their numbers and things. So I didn't know if you had any insight on how that's going to play out for tomorrow. I, I haven't looked into any of that, so I don't have any comment. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much, man. All right. Yeah, take and care. And I appreciate your work. Thanks, man. All right, so we got this comment in the chat from Steve J. He says, nobody saw NC State getting in because they played with a hot hand. You can't see any of this coming. Oh, we can't see any of it coming? Sorry, you must not be on the Patreon. We saw the Duke-NC State upset coming in the Final Four. We talked about how much sense it made, and we saw how much sense it made for NC State to upset Duke today in light of the Nate Barry death, which we covered, and in light of what happened in 83 in the future Cinderella album. and. Yeah, you can see these things coming. So you're you're coming here saying what is just like a, a lemming would write. Every year we're showing how rigged college sports are. The ritual sacrifices year in and year out. We've called a lot of these futures before they happen. Um, so yeah, to say that you can't see it. And, and I mean, it's just dumb too. It's just like the comment of like a, a, a blind person. Did you just see the big man for NC State? He was backing somebody down. And then that guy just, jump, just like you should do if a guy's putting too much weight in you, just jump back. They'll almost fall down on their weight. Big man Burns nearly falls down for NC State. The ball gets loose. Duke picks it up. And then out comes the ref with a phantom call, foul call, to keep the ball there for NC State. You can see how the game is being officiated to help NC State win the game. I mean, to not observe these things is just to be a blind person. It just It's just like how we loved Yale to upset on March 22nd over Auburn. Biggest upset of the tournament. You know, Yale's 322 years old. They're going to win on 3-2-2. Order 3-2-2 skull and bones out of Yale. Auburn got all kinds of horrible calls against them to make sure Yale won the game. So, yeah, when people come and leave comments like that, it's just like, sorry, this isn't this isn't a channel for dolts. I, I don't like dolts, and I don't like reading the comments of dolts. Steve J comes in and says, look at your final four. Uh, but, yeah, didn't – didn't we also explain that it didn't have to be that way? We were just talking about how there was a possible theme from 1985, which was about Wildcats. So anyway, Steve Jay's a troll. That's why he gets blocked. Steve Jay's going to come in and talk about my final four after leaving a comment that no one saw it when we just nailed a whole bunch of upsets with Duke and NC State and NC State again. <laughs> this is how the trolls are. See, this is what trolls do. They don't acknowledge any of the right stuff, which is amazing, which is unprecedented, which has never been done before. But then they want to bring up all the little wrong things. You know, I, I guess my troll who, who makes videos just trying to slander and chop up everything, I guess he puts out sports picks. People said in the first round he put out three picks for the first round of the tournament, and they were all heavy favorites. It's like, oh, <laughs> I mean, what a loser. You're trying to talk shit about us as we nail up major upset after major upset year after year, and all you can make is three picks of three heavy favorites? I mean, th these are who the trolls are. Yeah, what a loser. No one saw it except for the guy whose Patreon you're on trolling, right? You can't talk about that, though. Paid for agents. Sitting here talking nonsense. 780? Yeah. 780? Yes. Do you have something to say? Can you hear me? You're on. Yeah, good question. Uh uh, yeah, quick question. I'm just new to your channel, and uh, what does 86 mean again? What What's the the word that is 86 in Jabatra? Well, the latest word is Key Bridge 86, got 86th on the 86th day of the year. Why? Yeah, but, but what is 86 again? Like it's murdered or killed or destroyed or what is it? Well, 86 didn't just common terminology means to get rid of. Okay. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask you, totally separate, like I only got into you a little while ago, um, is so totally maybe off topic, but is that why they always say is 13 is unlucky because we're supposed to be in like a 13 month calendar and 
like we're, everything's supposed to be like 13, but that's why the Satanists say 13 is unlucky. Well, 13 is not unlucky in every culture. I, I, I don't know. Is this some kind of trivia c contest with all the questions or did you call in to contribute something to what we're talking about? No, dude, no. I'm not like I'm not a huge sports fan, so like I'm following you now, and I'm trying. Like I'm in Canada, so and I'm in Alberta, and it's hard to get a sports thing to like. You have to go through our government to. <clears throat> otherwise, it's illegal. So I'm going to do that, and I'm following you. But I'm just curious. It's totally separate. That's all. All right. Uh, well, appreciate the call. Thank you. So thanks. But anyways, like, honestly, like, I like what you do. It's all good. And, uh, yeah, keep it up. All right. And hopefully I'll start following you and, uh, I'll pass her on to the next one. All right. Thank you. You take care. Later. Uh, somebody says it's the women's tournament rigged. Yes, it is. NC State men and women have the exact same score today. You see the other day when the NC State won was 67 points. NC State women won that day as well. and. Here, let me, where do I pull up the women's here? I, I want you to see that they won with 77 that day, and then I want you to see why one one was 67 and the other one was 77. So NC State women won 77-67. And what did I do here? What happened? What happened? Why, why did I lose my screen? Hold on. Okay. So the women won was 77 the other day for NC State, and the men that day won was 67. Again, just making this point. These are the Friday games in the Sweet 16. Notice how North Carolina, when you run the alphabetic order forwards, is 67. When you run it in reverse, it's 77. North Carolina, 67 in reverse, 77. Like I was saying, the championship's 67 days from R.J. Barrett's birthday. And again, he played for the North Carolina school that has the 67 connection. So NC State, the Cinderella story of the tournament. Cinderella, 83. Haven't been to the Final Four since 83. That was a Cinderella story. And again, all on the day, death of Nate Barrett. Or uh, Nathan Barrett is how his name is. 83. All right, we don't have any more calls, so we can leave it there. And I see T's archive says he wished he sold the house and put it all on Yale. That's never a good idea. But that Yale game did look like it was coming through, and it did look like the upset of the first round, and it definitely was. That and Duquesne were two awesome upsets in the first round. We had a lot of upsets in the first round, but both those ones were big payouts, and they both had awesome narratives. Um. So yeah, if you want to join us to uh, to discuss the Final Four and the championship, we will be doing that on Patreon. Again, we're covering all sports every single day. We're covering all of MLB, all of NBA, all of NHL, all of March Madness. We'll be doing the Masters Tournament, which is two weeks from now. And again, we've hit five out of the last six Masters winners out of the gate. Trying to do it again, but um, we'll see. We'll see. How's the 17 coming into play? He said with the 17 coming into play, thinking, what's the 17? Yeah, that's what you're saying, that the ramp, the future put out the song Cinderella on March 22nd. And again, that's the same rapper that they took the uh, mask mandate down in airports on the anniversary of his song, Mask Off. So We know he's like one of these chosen ones that they run rituals around.
Yeah, we'll look more at this uh, Raptor schedule. They looked good to lose to Philadelphia today, and they got beat down. And, and I saw that Philadelphia scored the Philadelphia number on. See how Philly scored 135 on the Raptors? Philadelphia's establishment date in history has 135 numerology. And again, in the Bible, there's the letter written to the Church of Philadelphia about the key of David, which in Gematria equals 135. Fly Eagles flies 135. When Carson Wentz was a rookie on the Eagles, he set the passing record with 135 passes without a pick. It was an NFL record. Kobe Bean Bryant from Philly, 135. That number's so big with Philly. And you know what's crazy about the um, the 76ers win over the Raptors today? Nick Nurse was the coach of the Raptors, but he went to the 76ers. And today he got his 267th regular season win. 267 is the Philadelphia area code, beating his old team, Toronto. So that was their 13th straight loss, 76ers. Now they'll host L.A. Huh. Take a look at that one. So, but yeah, all the leagues scripted together. Yeah, Kay Kayla Kayla Decode Talker is where you want to go for the women's tournament. She covers the WNBA too. Kayla's a great member of the community. Let me plug her page real quick. So Kayla's got the coverage on the women's tournament over here. Oh, the remaining seeds add up to 17. Let's think, yeah, number one, UConn, number one, Purdue, that's two. Number 11, NC State, so now 13, and then Alabama's a four, yeah, 17. Okay, I see. Yeah, the the, ti the Tiger Woods Master. That, that's when we've been on the hot streak. We've won five out of the last six. Um, but that Tiger one was too easy. That was like the easiest Masters call ever. And it's just just understanding what the Master numbers are. The Master numbers are eleven and twenty-two. Tiger Woods won that last Masters twenty-two years after his first, and eleven years after his last major. Easy. And what was messed up is how they synced up all the slavery numbers with it. It was sick. So. Yeah, that was as master as it got. John Rom had a nice 11 thing going up last year. And again, ever since Seve Ballesteros has died and the Masters has ended on his birthday, as Spaniards won it every year. And that's how you can see death is always a huge part of the scripted ritual. That just goes to show Seve Ballesteros didn't, probably didn't die organically on the day he died. Bobby Hurley went back to back 91, 92. Interesting. I'll go back and look at those things. All right, you guys, we will leave it there. RIP to all of the people that had to be offed for this Riggs tournament. Oh, by the way, did you guys see at the end of the game, uh, Michael O'Connell, how they had to bring up that he's from Maryland? At the end of the game when NC State won, they had to bring up the uh, that Michael O'Connell, the shooters from Maryland. And, and I'll remind you guys, the word claps equals 83. That bridge just collapsed in Baltimore in an 83 ritual. And again, that bridge opened in history March 23rd. The owner of the Orioles just died on March 23rd, the 83rd day of the leap year. Baltimore has that 41 connection. Haven't won the World Series for 41 years. And then, um, again, NC State Wolfpack, 83, like Cinderella. Haven't done it since 83, 41 years ago. And they advance over Duke for their 41st all-time tournament win, making it to the Final Four. And, again, always there, you, you hear it all the time. They couldn't have scripted it any better. That's a perfect script. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm glad you're here. Let's do it in real time. I saw that headline on CNN, and I forgot to decode it. I post things quick on my Twitter when I see them, so I come back to them. Chance Perdomo. 
motorcycle accident dead at 27 let's I, I don't i'm not familiar with who this is but um yeah 27 is fateful born october 19th that's the day leaving 73 days left in the year sacrifice 73 died on the 89th day of the year good friday 89th day in a leap year so he died 162 days after his birthday 73 plus 89 right which would mean he also died on the 163rd day of his age which is the 38th prime number death 38 murder 38 killing 38 r.i.p 38 chance per domo he is known for i see he's a british actor killed by my debt Symbolic. Here, let me make let me make sure my math was right. October nineteenth, twenty twenty three to March twenty ninth. Total span of days, one hundred sixty three. Yep, thirty eighth prime. Over and over again. Chance Perdomo. Well, he's from the UK. I'll, uh, he he died the day after the MLB season officially got underway with all the teams. This is the year of the 120th World Series. Where did he die at? Doesn't even say where he died. Hold up. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Remember how they had Sabrina the Teenage Witch at the uh, the private school shooting, the empty school that supposedly had a mass shooting in it? Actor Chance Perdomo, star of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Gen V has died following a motorcycle accident, according to his representative. He was 27. Okay, it doesn't say in the first or second paragraph where it happened. Local authorities, where, where are these local authorities? Local authorities said there were no other individuals involved in the accident. Hunt said, CNN has reached out for additional information on the motorcycle accident. Um, again, the song Murder by Numbers by the police came out in 83. Murder equals 83 and 38. He played Ambrose Spellman across four seasons of Netflix's Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. He was in the Prime video, The Boys. It literally doesn't say where he died. It says local authorities just said it was a singular ac single vehicle accident. I mean, there's like how suspect it is. We don't even have a location where he died. What local authorities? What kind of crap reporting is this? It doesn't even name a police department. This is the problem with nobody questioning anything in our society. Stuff like this, like this, every day passes. According to his representatives, the statement, his passion for the arts an insatiable appetite for life was felt by all who knew him, and his warmth will carry on in those who he loved dearest. We ask to please respect the family's wish for privacy as they mourn the loss of their beloved son and brother. Two thousand eighteen's killed by my debt. Yeah, it literally doesn't. Um, you know, him him being connected to Sabrina, the teenage witch, though, and dying at 27, which has that 27 Gematria forwards and backwards. You see how broom and witch are? They're a perfect overlap with all four ciphers, witch and broom. 
exact same in all four. It's like Judge and Gavel are the exact same in all four. Gavel's the thing the judge bangs. Well, that is suspect. Literally no details about the how the accident happened, what police department, where. Just motorcycle accident. Check his character name real quick. Ambrose Spellman. Seems like this is the show he's most connected to. Chilling Adventures of... Oh, you see how Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is 162? So I was just saying how he died on his 163rd day of his age, which is true. But if you don't count the span of days, he died 162 days after. And, you know, the, the one thing also about him dying right at the start of the baseball season. See, I want to find out where he died. You see how baseball is 162 in reverse and, and Major League Baseball is also 162. And there's 162 game season in baseball. MLB's got the 27, 27 outs per team. Yeah, I think if there's something that makes more sense about the baseball season here. But, yeah, it's, it's hard to do much of this when they don't even tell you where he died at. Authority said. Let's see. Let's see if I can search for this. See if the New York Post has any additional information. Well, they don't they even have a different date for his death. They're saying Saturday, which would have been yesterday, March 30th. Everything else said March 29th, Friday. But yeah, this doesn't say where he died either. It just says authorities have advised that no other individuals were involved. It is currently unknown where the accident occurred. I mean, come on. Come on. Familiar numbers. Remember, the word ritual equals 27. That's why it's such a familiar number in, in death, because these are rituals. Uh, and again, I mean, what are the... Oh, hold up. What's it called again? The Chilling what? Was it Adventures of Sabrina? I just want to see when this show came out. The show came out 2018, October 26th. That's the day leaving 66 days left in the year. Didn't I see that his name equals 66? His name is 66. Yeah, see, the, the whole baseball thing is weird because this is the year of the 120th World Series. He's dead right at the start of the season. The 162 days later, it's a big baseball number. The name of the show is 162. Broomsticks. Baseball bats are referred to as sticks. There, there's something going on here. I'm sure they'll put out more information about his death eventually. They can't just leave it that he died in the, some unknown place in a motorcycle accident. Remember the, it, a couple of weeks ago, a hockey player supposedly died from a blood clot, and then later in the day it changed to he jumped to a suicide from a hotel balcony. It's like, whoa, from blood clot to suicide? So that show ended the end of the year 2020. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, this right up on his character. 
Chance Perdomo as Ambrose Spellman, Sabrina's warlock cousin from England, who is her partner in crime. He was formerly forbidden from leaving the Spellman home after being placed under house arrest by the Witches' Council for attempting to blow up the Vatican. <laughs> okay. He's had the first Super Bowl on the Vatican's birthday. He's dead on the 89th day of the year. Mahomes got his 89th win in that game. He runs the Spellman Mortuary with his aunties. He, If he died on March 29th, that, again, that's the 89th day of the leap year, that's... That would have been the Pope's 104th day of his age. Roman Catholic Church is 104. This was the 104th NFL season that just ended on the Vatican's birthday. Hmm. I got to think about it more. Mahomes is part owner of the Royals. We know they sync up the Kansas City Royals with the Royal family. 111th World Series was won by the Royals while the Queen was the head of the family, born on the 111th day of the year. Okay. Here we got a couple more calls. Take a couple more calls and we'll wrap this thing up. Six four seven. Hey, uh, Zach, it's uh, AY again from Toronto. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, Zach Edie's birthday from uh, the final uh, game to his birthday is exactly 36 days, by the way. From okay. whose birthday? Um, who's so whose birthday to the game? Uh, whose birthday to the game? The, the producer, uh, the, the producer Zach Edie. Oh, Edie. Okay, Zach Edie. Yeah, yeah. His birthday is uh, May fourteenth, and you know May fourteenth is a very important day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to uh, add that important uh, fact, like it, like yeah, he. And when you type in the Great American, sorry, the Great North American Eclipse, uh, one of the numbers is uh, 416. That's actually the Toronto area code. Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate those observations. Thank you. Take care. All right. That's it. Let's go out to uh, 480, Arizona. Hello? Hello. Hello. That hey, uh, I was uh, about all this, like uh, these bridges going down and everything, and then the flooding and the stuff in Arizona. So I said the last time uh, there was a flood in or, or, like a big flood in Arizona with a bridge, and it was the uh, it was uh, the Mill Avenue bridge in Tempe. It like washed away in uh, 1993. And if you type in the Mill Avenue bridge, that equals um, 119. Like 9 11, and then I so I started like researching more about different bridges and stuff in the St. Francis. Um, and St. Francis Dam um, collapsed in like 1928 or something. And the guy that uh, you can look it up right now, the guy that um, made that dam, he also helped with the Hoover Dam. So I think the Hoover Dam like, could be in trouble if you look at the Hoover Dam. He also made the Hoover Dam. He was born on 9 11, which is like 9 11, like the other guy, the, the Oklahoma guy, was born on 9 11, the, the bridge that got hit today. Um, there's just a lot with the, if you type in the Hoover Dam, that, um, oh, and also the London Bridge, which is here in Lake Havasu City in, in Arizona. Um, if you type all those in right now to the calculators, like the Hoover Dam Bridge, um, Hoover, like the Titan Lake, all their numbers are all like aligning with the Eclipse with Arizona. Um, the St. The St. Francis Dam, that guy, you know, that built it, that, that washed away and killed all these people whenever um, it went down. I don't know if you know about that dam or not. Have you ever heard about that? I don't know about the that. St. Francis Dam. Uh uh. So yeah, so yeah, if you type it in and look it up, that was in 1928. The guy that made it, it killed thousands of like this dam collapsed and killed all these people. They like washed away. Um, so that would that's pretty much what happened if the Hoover Dam um you know goes down and that would also create power. That could be the you know the with the power and everything. And I think that could go down and that would, you know, could wash away the um the London Bridge too if the Hoover Dam went down. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type those in. It's, you know, what I mean, the the numbers. I don't know if you see any other numbers that are like linking together, but there's just a lot of stuff with it. With the Hoover Dam, the Hoover Dam, you know, bridge that Tippecanoe Lake. Oh, that was also in '93 when Jim Napolitano was there. 
governor or whatever in 93. And then so that, that, that flood that happened, that ended on January, it started on January 6th, like the, the, the crazy rain that happened, it started on January 6th, 1993, and ended in uh, uh, January 19th, the so 1192. Um, also, Arizona was supposed to have the Super Bowl that year, which was the Cowboys. But they didn't have it because um, the NFL didn't let them have it because they didn't observe a Martin Luther King Day. So the Cowboys would have been in Arizona, you know, during that time, which which goes to like you know if there's a so so there's a Super Bowl the Super Bowl there, but then they got they got it in 1995. But also um, is is how that bridge happened in um, the one that collapsed in uh, to be was because the levees broke and all you know the levees when you think of the levees broke that's what happened in. Well, the Super Bowl is in New Orleans, um, which is uh, Drew Brees, and he went to produce. So that could be, you know what I mean, which is still in, in the in the final four. So that could be, you know, something like tying it in with that. So they said the levees broke in Tippy, and then that's what washed away the Tippy Town Lake Bridge, huh. or the or the Mill Avenue Bridge at that time, because Tippy Town Lake wasn't there. Because the levees broke, and then Levy was the quarterback of the bill or the the coach of the Bills um, during the time in, in 1993 when the Cowboys were playing them in the Super Bowl. Mark okay. Levy, which or Levy or whatever his name is, like that. So there's just a lot to. Uh, I know I'm like saying a lot right now, a lot of information. But if you like, you know, take a couple minutes and like type it in, and you'll start to see like a lot of stuff is, you know, syncing up with it. Could be, you know, the Hoover. Oh, and also they start. I, I went on YouTube to see like what would happen if the Hoover Dam collapsed. And all the stuff that was on there, there's all these videos that started like a year ago and eight months ago. There was none before that. So it's like they put them out like a year ago or eight months ago. And there's also an explosion at the Hoover Dam. I don't know if you that uh, last year. And they said it was a, a transformer fire or something like that. Yeah, I covered it, it like that explosion. day. It looked like the biggest. Yeah, um, I forgot. And then so there was some, like, Fox 10 here, like, went on the news and like, oh, live location. This so-and-so got a uh, viewer or whatever, and her name um, equals 119. Or no, her, her name equals, like, 128 or 119. It's on uh, YouTube also, but... There's just a lot of in the stuff she said, but like there's just a lot of like crazy stuff about it. So I don't know if you want to like look into it and we can like talk about it more tomorrow. I know you're trying to get other callers on in, in the show, but um I would really look into that. Like the like the Mill Avenue Bridge and the um Hoover Dam and the London Bridge, all that stuff. Yeah, we were talking about how Las Vegas, Vegas Las Vegas is powered by the Hoover Dam and Las Vegas has the big eighty six connection. Um, just like how the key bridge yeah. came down on the 86th day of the year. I was pointing out how when the explosion happened yeah. at the Hoover Dam, it was 86 years after it opened in 1936. And that maritime law that just yeah. uh, decided the payment for um, what happened with the bridge in Baltimore, it was amended in 36. We were talking about that 88 years earlier. Great Depression has that gematria of 86 yeah. as well. So... And they're the ones that built it. All the people in the Great Depression. Yeah. They're all the, like all the workers in the Great Depression, that's how they got it built was all them. And they said 112 people died. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, there's just a lot. Like, 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 there's just like way too much. You don't have to just check it out because it's like pretty pretty scary when you look at it and you like, see it all. But yeah, all the people that, like, yeah, like 119, like the number 85, 86 was all in there. Like there's just a lot of stuff. So that's it. I'll uh, check that out. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. Oh, that's a, you know, fair, yeah. All right. Bye. Yeah. Again, just uh, all the predicted programming for the grid going down. Again, it was Janet Napolitano, former governor down in Arizona, who really put that on the map when she left the Department of Homeland Security saying the next 9 11 is not it but when. And it's the grid going down in a cyber attack. And then Public Enemy put out the album a few years back, What You Gonna Do When the Grid Goes Down, with Arizona on the cover. This year's March Madness tournament has two different ads with the power going out. One is Barkley turning out the power, and he has a big old key, like the key bridge. And, of course, Barkley did play a number of years at the Phoenix Suns. R.I.P. to Walter Davis, Hubert Davis's uncle, played at UNC, who died right at the start of this basketball season, pro in college. All right. Well, if we don't have any more calls, uh, we can leave it there. And again, thank you to everyone who uh, participated in the show. Thank you to everyone who hits the like and the share. And um, 
Till next time, true seeker.